Okay, everyone. Thank you for coming. The, my name is Tina Bryant, and I am the Executive Director of the American Society of Architectural Illustrators. And we welcome you to this webinar with Carlos Cristerna of ne Neoscape. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about Carlos, um, Carlos has been with Neoscape since 2005, leading the studio's film and 3D animation team. His background in architecture balanced with um, an established artistic expertise is reflected in all aspects of his work. Each piece deftly choreographed for its intended, intended audience. As 3D visual, visualization director, Carlos oversees Neoscape teams of digital artists to ensure the most accurate portrayal of project design, creating a deliberate mood and atmosphere that supports project brand messaging. His decade of experience encompassing everything from architecture, design, and film, and provides him with an inviolable skill set that makes him a finalist for multiple Architectural Illustration Awards annually. He has received several awards and recognition, including the ASAI Award of Excellence in 2009 and the 2010 ASAI Formal Award, in addition to having his work in publications such as Ballistic Publishing, Exposé, and Elemental Books. Most notably, in 2013, he oversaw a project that received ASAI's prestigious Hugh Ferris Memorial Prize, and he graduated with a Bachelor of Architecture from, and I know I'm going to say this terribly, so I apologize, <laughs> Universidad Autonoma de Sinaloa? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, a little bit about ASEI. We are founded in 1986 as a professional organization to represent the business and artistic interests of architectural illustrators throughout North America and around the world. ASEI's principal mandate was and remains the fostering of communication among its members, raising the standards of architectural drawing and acquainting the broader public with the importance of such drawings as conceptual and represent, represent, representational tools in architecture. And if you have any questions about membership with ASAI, please email me at hq at asai.org. Carlos will be sharing the basic principles that he personally uses to do a rendering regardless of its size. He will be using some very simple, uh, a simple example uh, created recently. Some of the topics he'll be demonstrating will be camera positioning and lighting, basic techniques in V-Ray, Photoshop, and Photoshop compositing. The idea is to minimize the back and forth between applications and get the best result possible from 3ds Max so that you can concentrate on simple adjustments to stylize your rendering in Photoshop. This guy. Another thing that I look a lot into is not only the image balance in uh, in terms of um, you know the following the rule of thirds or anything or, or you know or rules like that is the uh, the objects that I have in the scene is simplifying the scene as much as possible and um, I'll show you what I have here or what I consider to be the foreground element on that rendering it's uh, Obviously, the lamp in the front, the vanity and the mirror, it's a very simple scene. In this case, my mid-ground is the rest of the scene, and my background or the focal point of this image was going to be you know, the view out the window, um, which is obviously just a photograph. So that's something that I think that should always keep in mind, and we always try to keep in mind, is to have a three layers of, those three layers of information uh, on, uh, on all of our images and even if our, in our, our films. Um, so then you notice that when I was doing the other, if you notice the other images, the, the aspect ratio of these images, um, let me just go back to uh, these guys. Aspect ratios vary a lot. I always start with um, a square aspect ratio for uh, all of my cameras when I'm doing the cameras. And then, you know, that allows me certain flexibility in, uh, in post. And we try to do a lot uh, of that, where we're doing the camera selection internally. We only do 
uh, square aspect ratio, and then we start cropping top, bottom, and all that. And taking into consideration that uh, if I'm correct, uh, photograph is going to be a 4x3 or a 2x3, depending on whether it's a full frame or a cropped sensor in a, in a real camera. So um, I like to uh, keep it square and then crop it. Uh, to the different, you know, to whatever we think looks best. In this particular case, for example, there would be too much ceiling or too much floor, since we're using a wider, much wider lens than this 50 millimeter lens in here. So, um, you know, the the like I said, there uh, in these compositional, you know, rules, avoiding the center is, you know, is one of the is one of the rules that a lot of people follow. In this particular case. It's the rule that I broke. So, um, um, hold on. Oh, nice. I lost my license, sorry. Um, so in this particular case, of course, I was a one-point perspective. I wasn't going to avo avoid the, the, uh, the center, but that's pretty much what we're doing here on the rest of the images where, you know, we're moving elements to the side. Uh, to the size of, of the composition. So it's not like, for example, you have a big column right in the middle, you have to move it, or a big wall and something like that. Uh, you have to move it uh, to the side. So that's a pretty straightforward uh, consideration to have uh, for your composition. So, and then at the end, you know, I think break the rules all the time, you know, try to, you know, try to what, you, what your gut tells you after you have followed these, uh, you know, whatever steps you have decided that work for you you know, you, you want to break them a little bit and then, you know, be flexible with them because otherwise you're going to end up with pretty, um, pretty boring stuff, I guess.